in our African tradition, bat music and battle tradition and dance and music and battle tradition, because hip hop was kind of born, you know, from our eyes as a reflection of not having access to African culture on the radio or in our neighborhoods and actually creating a sound and movement that, you know, is in our DNA reflected in that. So in African societies, you know, especially pre-colonialism, a lot of warfare that took place was ceremonial warfare. So let's say if your village had beef with another village, two villages would come together and they might first just send out the best dancers to just dance against each other or the best musicians to play music against each other. You know, maybe have some kind of competitions and from that we'll decide who was the winner. And that was an alternative than massive bloodshed. You know, that, that is an African tradition, was an African tradition, post-colonialism, and that had to change. You know what I'm saying? So warfare in Africa, after when Shaka Zulu and them started making warfare in the Zulu nation, theirs was total war, brutal war, all out war, because they had to match the warfare level that the Europeans were bringing to them. But before that, you know, it was more, we had a lot more ceremonial warfare. You know what I'm saying? Two people come together, they show who's the best at dance, they show the best who's at music, and from that you decide, you know, who, who was the best at, you know, that would be who was the winner of the war. And um, so in present day, what I saw at the beginning of hip hop, that there was a period of time when I lived in the projects in Brooklyn that drummers would just come out in the summertime, bah, 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 and everybody would set up different drums from different communities and different neighborhoods, and they would play drums on the radio. Now at that time, there was, this is, oh, man, I, I want to say 1979, 78, 79, you know, drummers come out playing, you know, I'm like, you know, maybe, you know, 10 years old or so, and you see them all out the, outside the window. And at that time <clears throat> in New York, we had AM radio. Um, so, you know, there wasn't, you know, the AM radio had the, the popular stations on it, and those stations played 80s music, set late 70s, eight, I'm talking early 80s, I'm going to say 80, 81. They played their 80s sounds on the radio, you know, so you had, you know, whatever those songs were, whether I, I, I want to I say Pet Shop Boys, I want to say, you know, computer sounding pop music was the predominant music on the radio, so uh, there was one point where people started plugging in stereo systems and at that time the DJs just would play, they play the music but play the drum breaks, drum breaks on the record. They take the drum breaks on the record, the drums come on, bah, here come the other drum, and to keep those drums alive, mixing those drums alive on two turntables, that became the next sound movement from the drummers who used to play outside. And so that became, you know, playing those drums, those electronic drums or those drum breaks on those records, whether they be James Brown records or, you know, th those sounds became the main sound. So uh, that's hip hop was kind of born for, for me from, the, from that sound, from hearing the, just those drums at night. Very similar to if you put it in perspective, it could be, you know, 500 years ago and it's still the sounds of drums at night, you know, moonlight, that whole kind of vibe. That, and so there's an African tradition that kind of, you know, w w was uh, created that hip hop. And then from that, also is the tradition of the ceremonial warfare. So hip hop is like warrior music for us. You know, it might be ceremonial warfare, but break dancing, all the elements of hip hop, <clears throat> even um, graffiti was battling. You know what I mean? Like certain people, you know, P13, OE, you write theirs, they were down with a certain crew. If you wanted to challenge them, you might write over their letters, but if you write over the, those letters, you are challenging them. You know, you know what I'm saying? It's ceremonial warfare with art, you know, and, 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 and hip hop, when, when hip hop, with the gang truce came in the Bronx, and hip hop was kind of born from that, it was a lot before that in the 70s, it was a lot of gangs. You know, New York was gang driven. Heroin kind of killed the gang culture. Men, like the warriors, like the warriors. Yo, it was like the Warriors, yo. <laughs> you had gangs, there was like four or five. In my area of Bushwick, we had a gang called the Dirty Ones. And then, yo, at some time at school, they was letting us out like 2.45, you know what I mean? Everybody get off, this Dirty Ones about to come up at three o'clock. Principal come on, yo, everybody, it's time to go home. 2.30, 2.45, get your school books, everybody get the fuck out of here. 
<laughs> because the dirty one's about to come up. It was knives, chains, you know what I'm saying? One person back in those days, one person had like a 22, somebody had a sword off shotgun, you know what I'm saying? Like it wasn't like the crack era brought in the nine millimeters and the AK 47s because people had money to buy all that. Back in those days, you know what I'm saying? One person had the 22, maybe somebody had something with tape on it, you know, and they would come up there and they might have a chain. Somebody had a couple of chain bats, you know, you know bat, bats was one of the main, main forces to use. You know, this was not ceremonial warfare. This was actual warfare. Gangs used to come at, in the 70s. Gangs used to come, big neighborhoods of gangs come together and fight. You know what I mean? Like, you know, some are at 100 deep. You should watch if you watch you want to see a movie, go see the education of Sonny Carson. That was some real warfare going on. Like that, it, 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 was, it was a crazy time in New York. It was violent. And, uh, and, and they would have big gang fights. My uncle was in the gang in Brooklyn, the biggest gang in Brooklyn, the Jolly Stompers. That's the gang that Mike Tyson was born from. My, my uncle was in that. And then, you know, they, the Jolly Stompers, the Jolly Stompers. <laughs> which missed me. I'm happy to stomp on your ass. <laughs> if you had to describe what Jolly Stompers mean. And Mike Tyson is from that gang. You know what I'm saying? So you, whatever, you know what I mean? Like whatever they was about, I am happy to stomp on you. You know, you know what I'm saying? And when there was gangs in the Bronx, you know, big gang battles. I mean, you get New York's that huge gang fights. And in those fights, there was chain switchblades. That was, that was real big back then. You know, those, they had to make that illegal in New York because so many people had a little switchblade, you press the button, you know, that was replaced in the mid, mid 80s by what we called the 007, which is another knife that you popped out like this, pop, you know? I don't know, we just called it the 007. Everybody had one, you know what I mean? You could buy them on, in this 42nd Street, you go down there, you know, you go get you a get you a little double O seven. If somebody say something, because the sound of it popped when it came out. That was, you know, if somebody. All right, I'm, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not messing with him. But, but I'm saying it was real warfare, and then warrior style, just like in the movies, like that many gangs, gang, and it was so many gangs. It was gangs per couple of blocks. So they made a gang truce in the Bronx in Harlem that says, okay, we got to stop. You got to let people be able to ride the train. You know, you got to, if your gang has a beef, then it has to be official beef. You know, maybe it's gang councils. But also, at that time, in the, in the late 70s, the streets were flooded with heroin. You know what I mean? Heroin was, you know, pumped into to, to, to black neighborhoods. And a lot of people that were in gangs turned to heroin, drugs, dealing, prison. A whole movement of people were, were, were shipped away. Um, but in that time, the, the, the gangs came together to form, to make this truce. And with that truce was the birth of ceremonial warfare between gangs. So now you, you might have, instead of your gang going to the next area to, to fight, they might meet up at Broadway International Disco, which we used to go to, or they might meet up at the Disco Fever, and then they might battle at rap, they might battle at DJing, or they might battle at, and battle at dancing. You know, like, and, and the same dudes who probably would, would have been shooting at you a little bit, now they dancing with you or whatever. So it did progressively kept the tra African tradition of live, alive, which is instead of beating and killing each other, you know, so much in gang fights, let's try to um, make a more ceremonial style of warfare where maybe, you know, you could be better at this. Or maybe, you know, to establish, you know, a, a pecking order where maybe now instead of y'all being the best shooters, then you the best dancers and break dancers and all that. And hip hop kind of was born. So it does have a warrior element to it. So whenever two people battle, to me, that's why I always, I feel that, you know, if, you, if you're really hip hop, you feel like when somebody say battle, they are saying music, but they are saying like musically, I'm going to war with you. You know, and to me, uh, that's what I felt the Just Play Swiss battle.